Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people should be aware that this video contains images, voices and names of deceased persons. In 1971, 50 years ago, Neville Bonner became the first Indigenous Australian to enter the Parliament of Australia, representing the people of Queensland for the Liberal Party. I remember Neville Bonner uh, as a, a warm, uh, likeable, proud Australian of Aboriginal descent, who was also very proud that he was a Liberal. Neville Bonner was born on Eucaraba Island on the Tweed River, New South Wales in 1922. He spent time at the Rurubinda Aboriginal Settlement in Queensland and later as an adult spent 15 years at the Palm Island Aboriginal Reserve before moving back home to Ipswich to Jagada country. Here was a man who was born on a desolate island uh, in northern New South Wales and who rose to enter the National Parliament. He got there really the hard way. He didn't have much education. He had a, a difficult job and yet he succeeded in the world. He was a wonderful man. Neville Bonner, I think, meant different things to different parts of the com Indigenous community. For the older generation, it meant a lot because they were then, they were alive, they saw what happened and they knew the challenges that he was facing. One thing I will say about Grandpa Neville and talking to a lot of people that still that knew him and that are still alive is they talked about how he actually cared enough to get in his car, go for a drive and have a cup of tea with them in their homes. Neville Bonner had very little formal education. He worked many manual jobs to support his wife, Mona, and their five children. His first formal political engagement came in the mid-60s, a time of intense activism and turmoil. Bonner chose to join One People of Australia League a moderate Aboriginal rights organisation. It was a period of rapid change in Australia in advancing the rights of Indigenous peoples. In 1962, Robert Menzies led the changes to the Commonwealth Electoral Act, which gave Indigenous people the option of enrolling to vote at Commonwealth elections. In 1967, Liberal Prime Minister Harold Holt led a referendum where more than 90% of Australians voted yes to give the Commonwealth the power to make laws for Aboriginal peoples and to count Aboriginal people in the census. The day after the referendum, Harold Holt said, I was delighted with the overwhelming vote in every state of the Commonwealth, favouring the elimination of those references in the Constitution which smack of discrimination. In 1967, Neville Bonner was participating enthusiastically in the campaign around the referendum and he was handing out how to votes at one of the polling booths in Oxley. Bill Hayden came up to him, saw him handing out how to vote cards and said, aren't you handing out the wrong how to vote cards? You should be a member of our party. It annoyed me to think that anyone could come up to me and assume that I would be automatically handing out a particular set of out of guard. No one had that right. Were you a member of the Liberal Party? No, not at that time. But I was the next day. Menzies lauded personal effort and recognition of personal effort. And this really resonated with Neville Bonner. Bonner was a fierce advocate for Indigenous people. During his maiden speech, he said he would fulfil the role of Senator, for which my state of Queensland, my race, my background, my political beliefs, my knowledge of men and circumstances dictate. His loyalty, his passion and his willingness to work with whoever he needed in order to make change happen were his standout qualities. In 1979, Bonner was the first backbencher to introduce a government bill and have that bill passed when the Liberal Party created the Aboriginal Development Commission. What a moment. Here was an Aboriginal person Introducing a bill about the Aboriginal Development Commission, it meant an awful lot to Neville. The relationship between Malcolm Fraser and Neville Bonner was really strong. They shared a belief in the importance of social cohesion in Australia. The idea that people from 
All different kinds of cultural and ethnic backgrounds should be able to understand each other and work together well for everybody's um, advancement. Malcolm Fraser delivered land rights laws. These laws today have led to the bulk of the Northern Territory being under the control of the original owners. The Fraser era was not a period of economic reform, but it was impeccable on liberal values. A fair deal for Indigenous people. Neville Bonner admired Malcolm Fraser's leadership, remarking, we'd never have got the land rights in the Northern Territory if it hadn't been for Malcolm Fraser. He had an affinity, he had a deep concern and a deep commitment to the Aboriginal people of this country. Fraser realised the great disadvantages that Aboriginal people had then, unfortunately still have now, uh, and Fraser determined to do something about it. Neville Bonner fought for things he believed in. Bonner opposed drilling in the Great Barrier Reef. He championed the Racial Discrimination Act. At every opportunity, he increased the understanding in the community of the history and rich cultural heritage of Aboriginal people. In 1976, Bonner introduced a private member's bill to raise awareness of the alarming rates of Indigenous imprisonment. I will not condone breaking the law. He continued to push for Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander voices to be heard, and that work continues today. He was very conscious um, that he was the first Aboriginal Australian to have been elected to the National Parliament. He wasn't a one-issue person. He wasn't somebody who only focused on that. It certainly wasn't an easy time. Discrimination and challenges followed him his whole life. As a child, Bonner was given special permission to attend South Lismore School. But on the morning he started, there weren't any children, as parents refused to let their white children attend with black children. Being Aboriginal was almost treated like you were a second class citizen, straight up. There was all these perceptions around your value and your contribution to society. And with all of the rejection that he experienced, all the rejection um, and the fear that his grandparents and his mother experienced, having to prove yourself to be better than the non-Indigenous person in whatever you do. You've got to be better just to be seen, which is really sad. These deeply entrenched views existed throughout Bonner's career. For example, in 1973, Bonner was the guest of honour at a debutante ball in a town called Nanango in Queensland. However, with the support of their families, four white girls refused to curtsy to a black senator. Bonner was a democratically elected representative. Even six years after the resounding success of the referendum, people still thought it beneath them to curtsy to him because of the colour of his skin. In 1975 at Mount Isa, he was refused service at a bar, again because of the colour of his skin. He stood his ground until the manager poured him a drink. Bonner wasn't just standing his ground for a drink. He was standing up for his belief that everyone should be treated equally and be given a fair go those incidences in which people wouldn't acknowledge, wouldn't curtsy or acknowledge his position as they would others. It stung him, but it strengthened his resolve to continue to conduct himself in a way that he knew they weren't, but was reflective of the integrity of his race. Australians for Constitutional Monarchy established the Neville Bonner oration in his memory. In 2014, Tony Abbott delivered the oration as Prime Minister. He spoke of his memories of Bonner at the Constitutional Convention. Despite the many indignities that might have soured his outlook, Neville Bonner had a great love for our country, its institutions and its people. From the bottom of my heart, I pray you, stop this senseless division. Let us work together on the real issue. Bonner's story shows us that liberal values speak to Aboriginal people. Today, both sides of politics are committed to national reconciliation. Neville Bonner's career reminds us of that contribution made by the conservative side of politics, which is not as well known as it should be. Neville Bonner was an incredible Australian. He was a trailblazer, he was an articulate senator, and he was a man for the times. He was always somebody who argued the case for fairness and social justice in debates, uh, not 
just from an Aboriginal perspective, but he did that if it was required, but for the general community. I think he was a special person because of what he achieved at a time when racism it was still quite blatant. He demonstrated what can be achieved irrespective of where you came from. He taught me a lot about being a senator and a lot about being a human being, so very grateful to him. His resolute dedication to achieve his goal to enter politics and represent our people remains an inspiration for me. The fact that he was the first Aboriginal person to be chosen for federal parliament is something I am very proud of as a Liberal and as a former Liberal Prime Minister. Each parliament, each government, as an opportunity to shape the future in ways we can barely imagine at the time. The Liberals of today should be reminded that they had in their own party, in their own party room, one of the historical figures of Aboriginal Australia.